Is anyone going through trials right now? Wow, one, two. Wow, we, this is a more than a victorious church. We should be screaming and praising it. Wow. I've been going through trials since I came to know the Lord 30-something years ago. That's a trial itself, serving God and experience and true. Paul mentioned in the book of Acts, I've been beaten, whipped, stripped, stoned, and tripped, shipwrecked. While Paul and Silas were sitting in jail, probably surrounded by rats and mice and cro cockroaches and all kinds of creeps, probably in the stains on those jails. He is like, let's sing a song. Let's sing a song. Oh, my people, if you only learn to sing a song, if you only learn to worship God in the spirit and truth, when we gather together, that's what we should do with passion. Raise our hands, raise our voices, and praise God. You know, as I read that scripture and I see the description of, of Paul going in, in jail and he says to Silas, let's sing a song. I just take it back to us right here in America. Oh, we will be complaining about the conditions. We will be complaining, oh, this place is infested with rushes. Oh, the rush is crawling on me. This place stinks. Did you see the food that they serve us this morning? This is inhumane. Oh, just wait. Uh, my lawyer gets me out of here because I'm going to sue them. Let us sing the song. Let us glorify God. Guess what? An earthquake rumble, the jail walls shook, the door swung open, and Paul and Silas walk out free. Are we there? Oh, my friends, if we just learn to glorify God in the midst of our trials. Let me tell you what a trial is. A trial is a test. And here I don't go the religious one because I can, I can sense it already. Oh, God doesn't give me trials. Hmm. He may not give us a trial, but he allows the enemy to test us, to test our faith. Amen? A test is a a trial is a test. It's a test of your faith, your patience, your endurance. It's a test. The kind, the, it tests the kind of stamina that you have when you're going through a series of trials. How many of you see trials coming after you? Waves after waves after waves of trials events in your life that will shake up your foundation. I know many of you, I have prayed with you for your trials. When you pull out a bill, you go to the mailbox and pull out a bill and you open it and you're like, I think I can make it through this one. But the following day, you go and open that mailbox, and, and you're like, oh, my God. I don't have money to pay all these bills. You start searching for money. You start praying for money. You start asking God to do a miracle in your life. And let me tell you something. In America, we have bills like crazy because we are not self-disciplined. 
we just expand. We're in a, in a society that you, you just want it now. Right now. We are like tight to go. You get stained in your shirt, and you have the tight to go, and you just apply, and you're ready, clean, a miracle right there. That's real. That's not voodoo. That's real. We as Americans, we are, we, we are spoiled. Anyone can serve God in a sunny day. But it's another thing when you're going through the storms of life. Anyone can serve in the army when you are behind the barricades with, on training with plastic bullets. But there is another thing when you are in the battlefield where real bullets fly. The Bible says in James 1, 2, and 4, Consider all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance, and let endurance have its perfect results, so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. This is the NSA. The NLT, New Living Translation, say, they are brothers and sisters when you trials or any kind come your way. Consider an opportunity for great joy. Say with me, for great joy. great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. Oh, I, I read to the different translations, and I recommend when you read your Bible, Many people come, but I don't understand the Bible. I read the Bible and I get more confused. Get a couple of translations, different versions, and, and read the same verse and then different translations and see how God speaks to you. There is nine excuse. We live on a day, on a time of excuses, and there is no excuse. Ninety percent of the people in America own a Bible. I don't know who reads it, what's the percentage that reads it, maybe collecting dust at the entrance. Oh, my house is the house of God. We have a Bible right at the entrance. My friend, if you don't read that Bible, it's like having a piece of wood in the corner. That's nothing for you. There is no excuses. In my phone, I had every Bible that I can imagine, and I'm sure many of you had that. I can get any translation I want to, any study books. I got logos that you can log in and get everything you need right there. Any language you want, Chinese, Chinese, you get. But they question is, are we reading it? Are we studying it? First Peter 4, 12, dear friends, don't be surprised at the fiery trials you are going through as if something strange were happening to you. Oh, pastor, I'm going to something. I don't even know what it is. Strange things were happening to you. James 1.12, dear brothers and sisters, when troubles or any kind come your way, consider an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. Hebrews 12.11 says, all discipline for the moment seen not to be joyful, but sorrowful. Yet to those who had been trained by it, afterwards, afterwards it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness. And many, the Bible is full of scriptures about trials, and all of them is rejoice when you go through trials. Knowing that you, the testing of your faith produces endurance. I may sound mad or may look mad, but I, I have a passion. 
And my passion is that we can serve God in spirit and in truth, that we will ignore all the things, the stupidity of the world. That we come to church and because it's too cold, we start whining. That because the coffee is cold, we whine. Helen, why you didn't come early and put the coffee earlier? If we start whining so much and we focus on what we're supposed to do, we, we, it will be a different story. This church will be exploring. Praise and worship will be awesome. It is awesome as it is for me at least. I love praise and worship. I love to sing to the Lord. It is not weird what you're going through. It's not real. It's, it is God's thing. If you go into a trial. If you're a Christian and you're living in sin, you are going to you are going through a trial. Because what God is gonna do when you read the word or when the word gets preached is he is gonna put a light. The word of God is a light. He's going to illuminate that sin. He's going to make it obvious for you to repent and come out of that stagnation. He, he will do that, that you can come and have freedom. Sin will enslave you. And seeing cripples in our lives because instead of praying and fasting and doing what we're supposed to do, we are more focused on doing, doing, and doing. It's okay to do works, to help with the church, to do what we had to do. But it's another thing, ignoring what we are supposed to do. Honor God. There are some more scriptures that I'm going to give you. Read it for yourself. Go home and study. Second Corinthians 12, 19. Say, my grace is sufficient for you. Romans 8, 35, 39. Who can separate us from the love of God? Luke 6, 22, 22. Rejoice. These are all the scriptures that... Help you. They uplift you. They minister to you when you're going to trials. Let me classify the different kind of trials that we go through. The Bible says when you go through diff the different trials. Number one, trivial trials. Trivial trials means lack of seriousness, unimportant, and has no value. Most of the trials that we go through are trivial. We put too much importance in nonsense things. If we learn to classify our trials, our life will be much easier. Let me, let me give you some examples of what tri trivial trials are. Trivial trials are a flat tire. For you women, a bad hair day. <laughs> Washing your car and driving to a pad of mud. <laughs> Parking under the shade of a tree. Under the birds. It is the pastor not shaking my hands on Sunday morning after the service. He didn't say hello to me. <laughs> Somebody taking your favorite seat in church. Oh, he took my seat. No toilet paper in the bathroom. <laughs> Even though you should have looked before you sat down. Those are tri trivial trials. And we lose, we lose our salvation in trivial trials. We pay too much mind and importance on those nonsense things. 
Oh, I'm going to a trial. God, help us. Numbers 11, 4, 6 says, And they mix... And the mixed multitude who were among them, they yield to intense craving. So the children of Israel wept again and say, who will give us meat to eat? Oh, they can whine. We remember the fish which we ate in Egypt, the cucumbers, the melons, the legs, the onions, the garlic. But our whole being is dried up. There is nothing at all except this manna before our eyes. All they knew was how to complain. That's why they were 40 years going around and around eating manna, but at least they were eating angels' food. They were so close-minded that they couldn't even see that. Oh, the devil is always going to remind you of the great things that you went through. Oh, I remember the, the fasting and the steak and all those things. When you go into a trial, that's what the devil brings. But he will never remember that that steak was unhealthy. That the bagel with glory with cream cheese is going to kill you one day. The ones that drink, they, the devil will never remember when you embrace that toilet and throw your guts in there. And the ones that drink, they know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Hopefully everybody got delivered and, and they're living a pure life. We all go through trials just like the people of Israel. We just complain. It's nothing to eat but manna. Nothing to eat but this cereal, or bowl of cereal. Praise God that you have a bowl of cereal. Amen, amen. Praise God that you can eat the bowl of cereal. Nothing to eat but these Roman noodles. It's the cheapest noodles you can buy. <laughs> oh, my friend, when you come from poverty, those noodles are a delicious plate. If it doesn't look good, if it doesn't look appetizing, go outside, take some greenery, cut some flowers, some leaves, and put it next to the noodles. And make it look like a gourmet meal. And sit down and give God thanks and pray and praise that you have noodles to eat. Amen? Amen. Some people go to the extent and have the audacity to complain. When they open the refrigerator, it's full of food. Oh, it's nothing to eat. <laughs> and you know because you have done it. Those are trivial trials. <clears throat> Things are non-important, nonsense. And we spin our wheels and, and die. We waste our time that we should spend with God. Number two, testing trials. And by the way, all, that with, all these trials start with a T. That's easy to remember. Testing trials are times of challenges and difficulties that they require a maximum attention, effort, and your abilities. First Peter 1, 6, 7 says, In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while it need, it need it be. You have been grieved by various trials. You see that? It's in the Bible. Various trials. That the uniteness of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes. Throw it is tested by fire. Gold gets pure by fire. And so you are going to be tested by fire. May be found. 
to tested by fire or may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. My friend, don't take it a trivial trial and make it a testing trial. When you had a flat tire, you are not tested by fire. You just run over a nail. I, sometimes I can imagine that poor old devil gets all the blame. I bind you loose of a demon or rod nails. And the devil is out there before God. What do I have to do with this? And God is, I know, I know. They are holding a prayer meeting because of that. The devil tells God, your church is so self-destructive that they don't need my help. When we take nonsense things and, and take it and apply it to our lives, that's what we're doing. We're destroying ourselves. We don't need no help. We give too much honor to the devil. Oh, the devil made me do it. No. Most of the time it's us. Our own will. There is two kind of church. When I, when I came to know the Lord, I was a pure sinner. And then I accepted the Lord and I was filled with the Holy Spirit and I became pure, holy. That's what the Bible say, tells me. And then I joined the church and I started to see how the church runs. Oh, my people. We had churches. We had a big C church and a small C church. Which church do you belong? The big C church is the bride of Christ. It's the church that is, it, people are doing what God called you to do. Living a pure, holy, righteous life before him and before the, the communities. And the small C church, oh, they are all busy. They're always working. They're always in church. Here it goes, they're going to church. But they are more interested in the gossip. They are more interested in destroying each other. They're more interested in finding out things. That's what they, busy bodies. That church is on the way to hell with all the religious duties that they do. Wish I you are today. Testing trials is, is the three young men in Daniel 3, Chandra, Mersha, and Abednego. They have a choice. They either bow down and worship King Nebuchadnezzar or go into the fear of furnace. Are you ready to be tested by fire? That, the, the king ordered that that, fear, that furnace will be hit seven times more than normal. The Bible also tells us that when they throw these three young men in there, the fire consumed all the soldiers that were throwing them. It vaporized them. They become like liquid, air. That's how hot it was. Are you close to that oven? But the king was very distressed. He goes out and he sees four men walking. And he called his people and he, like, wait a minute, we throw three people in there. Why do I see four? They pull out of the oven and not even a, they didn't even a smell like small. Are you ready in your relationship with God?
to see the four men to walk with you? Or, we or are we just playing games? Do you think that faith was tested? You got to believe it. Number three, traumatic trials. It gets heavier and heavier. And I know many people that have gone to traumatic trials. These are extremely stressing, frightening, shocking, and can cause severe mental and emotional stress. In Daniel 6, 7, 28, Daniel's was thrown into the lion's den. That can be traumatic. But he had the faith. He had the relationship with God. He knew that he, he was going to go in there. God will rescue him. He did not question. He did not wave. He just went and prayed, opened the windows of his room and prayed three times as he was accustomed. The disciples saw Jesus being crucified. Do you think that's a traumatic trial? They see the Lord going to the cross, being tortured, broken, and he dies at the cross. All their hope was gone. Daniel and the disciples were beyond testing trials. They, what they experienced was traumatic. When the doctor tells you, you only have a certain amount of time to live, or a member of your family, what do you do? What is your first reaction? We experienced this not too long ago. With my father-in-law, the doctor told us he has six months to live. And those six months were just a few days. Though he was in advanced says, praise God for, for that. But it is traumatic. Because I saw the girls getting together and, and, and they, they were in despair. Oh, six months. In six months, we lose our father. And then 10 days later, he's gone. That can cause some trauma. Do you think so? Yeah. When your life is on the, on the line, and many Christians today are paying the price for serving the Lord. They have been fasting in the table of the Lord. They have been eating with the Lord and missions in other countries, in Muslim countries. And suddenly a group of men come in with arms and they put a loaded gun in your face and they curse God or else. We will rape you, why? We will rape your kids, your daughters, right in front of you. And then we will kill one by one and you will be last. Reject Christ. What will you do? And don't be too quick to say, oh, I'll die for Christ. Because you have never had I don't know, I haven't. You have never had a gun in your forehead and say, reject Christ. That's what we had, what we had to be ready for. If somebody comes through this door, do we have the power and the anointing? We are so full of the Holy Spirit that we can speak to that devil that isn't that man and say, drop the gun in the name of Jesus, and it shall be done. No, we're seeking for men to get equipped with guns. I'm not against that. We, we grow with guns. 
My father told us how to shoot and defend ourselves if we have to. It is necessary sometimes to use force. But that's not what I'm talking about today. What kind of power, what kind of authority is in you? Can we speak to sickness and that sickness will flee? I'm so tired with Christians that they come and pass or pray for me. I'm going, I always have pain here, or pain there, or this or that. And I'm not making fun of sickness because I've been there. That I can tell you I've been there. And then I pray for you in faith, and I say, in the name of Jesus, I cast your pain, whatever I pray. And then two seconds later, I see you with another brother. Oh, can you pray for me? I'm so sick. You know what you're doing? You're just saying, I don't have enough faith to believe this. I don't believe that I'm going to be healed. And it's okay when you, when you ask different people to pray and group. That I will say, join me in prayer that I'm going through this or that. But you have to believe it. Believe it if it is done right there. God chose the way. God chose when to heal you. When to heal your loved one. He is the one that has the ultimate word, not you. You be, you be faithful, fast and pray. All those things do not come out by self through fasting and prayer. It is hard to fast, especially when you work in a place that is full of food and everybody eat is eat in front of you. And you are like, Jesus, <laughs> help me. And somebody comes with Dunkin' Donuts bags and put it on your desk. And you're like, take that devil out of my sight. <laughs> it's hard. It's hard. But it can be done. Number four. Tragic trials. Oh, my friends. Many of you have gone through trials. Tragic trials. I know because I have been there with you. Tragic trials are disas disastrous, painful. Have you read the book of Job? He lost his family. He lost all his kids. He lost his livestock. He lost his servants. He's lost everything God has given him. He had nothing. Then he was struck with boils and wounds, and, and he was an outcast to society. He sat in, in the middle of the dust and put dust in his head and cried out to God. I'm pretty sure he questioned him. I don't know. Probably he prays him. The Bible is not that explicit, but he, 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 I know that he had a relationship with God. And most probably, like, God, naked, I came naked and living. You gave it all to me. You had taken all. When he were, had to scrape his wounds with a rug, with a piece of, of, of porcelain that scraped his wounds and so much pain and agony, just thinking that he had lost all his family, all his kids. That's not supposed to happen. A parent is not supposed to bury the kids. Then he was ridiculed by his friends. Oh, oh, brother, must be some sin in your life. Oh, we are always ready to point fingers without realizing that the rest of fingers are pointing back to you.
Even his wife comes and says, curse God and die. Wow. I praise God for my wife. Uh, she hates when I do this, but uh, pray together as a couple, those who are married. I don't have to ask my wife to pray for me. I know that she's covering me with prayers every day. She, she knows what I'm going through. She knows my struggles. Does your wife know your struggles? Does your husband know your struggles? Or you are just like cats and dogs fighting every opportunity that you all get together. Suck them in prayer. They don't want to know anything about God. Just pray for them. God is the one that delivers people. God is the one that heals people. God is the one that, that does the miracles, not us. Do not focus on the trial. Do not focus on the problem. Focus on God, and he will deliver you. What about John the Baptist? This is a man that just was born to die, just like Jesus. This is a, a he was Jesus' cousin, best friend. The Bible said that Jesus loved him. And they just went to jail and. Whew, with a soul, they just decapitated him. Do you think that's a trial trial? How his mother felt. All those who knew him. Christ, Jesus wept. He didn't even have time to mourn for him. He had to move on with his ministry. He said at some point in the Bible, let the dead bury the dead. You just keep moving. Keep moving. Praise God and everything. Give God glory on everything. Submit to God. Allow him to work in your life. I had the opportunity to perform some fu uh, funerals. And especially young people, when they had died by trying means. I was the parents with despair. You, they look at you like, do something. And I'm totally disarmed. I don't know what to say. There are times that we don't know what to do. You said the despair of a mother crying over the son or daughter and in hope that he will get up or she will get up or open their eyes. But if it, that mother put her trust on Jesus, that pain will alleviate. It will go much easier. I'm asking you today, where are you today? Are you ready? Because if, as you get serious with God, and please understand me, is getting serious with God is getting in your knees, getting in your face, looking for a relationship with God. That you can sit in the corner and you just open the Bible, and as you go through the pages of the Bible, God just speaks to you. God ministers to you. Young people, if, if you are going through trials, if you're, you're not performing good in a school, or you're not, you're not to where you are supposed to be, or you are in a sports and you fail, don't just throw the towel. 
pick at the pieces. You are just 18, 19, 20, sometimes 30 years old. If you fell in business, don't let that drive you down. My hope today is that we will take some of this information and apply it to our lives. I see many people have a passion for God, but they neglect God. They get involved in the things of, of the work of the Lord that they forget the Lord of the works. It's good to do work. It's good to do this and that. But make sure that you're doing what God called you to do. I can be involved in every single ministry, and I have been involved in every single ministry that is in the church. When we were going to Bible school, we were involved in everything that it was about in that church. But are you being effective? Are you doing what God called you to do? Because as you respond to what God has called you to do, as you are obedient, as you seek God, make sure that the trials are going to come. And your faith is going to be thirsty. My hope is that we'll take this to heart. I, I pray for this message. I ask God to give me what, you, what his people need, including me. Because there's no one message that I deliver that God will not speak to my heart. It makes me search deep. Because then I can deliver it without a problem. Knowing that God is in control. That God has spoken to me. And that somebody in this place needed these words today. Amen? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you to stand with me. I'm not calling anybody to the altar. If you're going through a traumatic or trial, whatever it is, and you need prayer, by all means, I'll be here. I will pray for you. But there is nothing to pray about this. It's about submitting to God and doing what he has done. My prayer for you this morning will be that God will give you the faith, that, the favor that he gave Jeremiah to build a wall. That in, la, in the prayer of Jabez, that may God expand your borders. That he will rebuke the devourer out of your lives. As you try as you tithe and you give to, to, to God that God will bless you abundantly that God will open the windows of heaven and release his blessings upon your life that God will bless marriages this morning that a new relationship with couples is, begins this morning And let me tell you, let me interject this, and it's not in my notes. Living together out of marriage is not godly. Read for yourselves the scriptures. God says so, not me. Amen? I pray that starting today, you will seek for the deep relationship with God. Let's pray. Close your eyes, please. Don't look around. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for you people this morning, Father, that blessings will be upon their lives, Father, that you will increase their faith, Lord, that you will 
help them believe that you are God, that you are all powerful, almighty, that you are the source of their lives, that they can trust you in every trial and every tribulation that they're going through, that they will just place in your hands and say, you are in control. You are in control. As for me and my house, I'm going to praise you. I'm going to worship you. I pray, Father God, that you will encourage them, that you will give them a, 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 a light at the end of the tunnel as they go through wherever they're going, Father, I pray that you will help them, that you will hold them, that you will bless them, that will speak to them and minister to them. I pray that you will fill every single person in this sanctuary with hope, hope on the living God that one day we will meet the Lord and he will say, well done, my faithful servant. Father, as we conclude this service, I pray, Lord, that you will minister to your people. Bless them through this week, Lord Jesus. Speak to them. Heal them, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I pray for pastor and his family as they travel back home, that you will give them traveling mercies, Father God, that you will empower and minister to him, Father God, that when he comes, he comes like a bolt of fire and minister to his people, Lord. Lord, we bless you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you. Glory be to God. I pray for you every day. Hang there top when the trials come in. God loves you. He cannot love you any more than he loves you. Be blessed. Hug each other. In Jesus' name.